I always like to talk about the survival of Serena because it tells my story as well as a very important story about immigrants floating in from their countries on floats and tubes. I first did Serena in the early 80s when I was very affected by all the immigrants coming in from Cuba on inner tubes and floats. And there have been movies and stories. And I went down there and I saw these people floating in and I had to do a sculpture about that. But many years later, I was invited by John Spike to show my work in the Venice Biennale. He said, make them large, because if the pyramids were small, no one would go to Egypt. So this goes back before they did this 3D was perfected and I had a very short amount of time to take my inner tube sculpture and make it 12 feet long like you see in Survival of Serena and it was so popular she needed her own bodyguard. People waited online for over an hour and some people even kissed the sculpture. I heard women say it reminded them of birthing. I heard other people say they related to it because that's what they'd love to do on a carefree day on a lake. It was evident that worldwide people related to it. stem from my portraying the goddess Quan, Quan Li, the Buddhist goddess who was the protector of the earth. And the reason I did her on the sphere is the sphere represents the earth in this sculpture and she's the goddess protecting the earth. But interestingly enough, the word Quan means money and we all know that money makes the world go round and she's the keeper in portraying strong women again. I think this speaks for strength and women and hopefully women in power. She's not just humble, but she's a protector. And she's looking down on the symbolic world below. woman. I'm a member of the International Women's Forum of Women That Make a Difference and I see women as powerful and strong who have to multitask, who can think of more than one thing at a time and I'm always looking at women and their thoughts and what makes them tick. I think that comes through in the sculpture that other women can relate to. This sculpture interacts with the pedestal, and the pedestal becomes part of the piece because every day we have to take time out of our busy lives to just contemplate the moment and appreciate the very simple things. It's important just to think and meditate about our life and what we're doing and what, how we should appreciate the moment.
My first collector was Malcolm Forbes. My first body of work was an erotic body of sculptures called Rated X that I showed in Fort Worth, Texas in 1979. Four years later, I was invited to show on 57th Street, and that's when I did my first swimmers, because I wanted to do clean American, all-American sports, and women that told a story. And the owner of the gallery says to me, you know those erotic pieces that you made four years ago in Texas? Can you bring them in? I would like to show them. Now it's the last day of the show. And the older man says to me, Carol, do you know who I am? And I said, no, who are you? And he said, I'm Malcolm Forbes. He said, what would you say if I wanted to buy everything in the show? But I particularly like this swimmer and all the erotic art. So Monday morning came and I gave him a good price and he bought my entire show out. So he was the first one. He gave me the push, just the backing that I needed. In the many years I've been sculpting, I'm collected by the Clintons, the Emperor of Japan, uh, Henry Kissinger, the Called It Collection, Nike, Aldo Shoes, the Bremen Collection, Richard Chack Collection. Michelle Rue who was in charge of the marketing for Absolute Vodka, started a very interesting campaign to bring art to the public through selling the product of vodka. And he had Ed Ruscha, Andy Warhol, um, the biggest names to each do a piece, and he used them in his advertising campaign. And I wrote him a letter, and I said I'd like a meeting. I said that I'd like to do a piece for the campaign, and he said, but I'd like you to do a sculpture. Can you come up with something unique? So I came up with these flatbed trucks that I designed with, the, with installations on each truck, like two people toasting um, with the vodka, um, a sculpture of me as the artist on my knees, creating an unfinished sculpture called The Absolute Woman, um, Absolute Summer, and uh, they traversed major cities, New York, Chicago, L.A., um, Miami, and these trucks um, caught the attention of people bringing art to the public for the first time, rather than people waiting online to go into a museum or a gallery. Um, just uh, everyday people were seeing art. And Malcolm Forbes thought this was so amazing um, because he, he was my first collector and he continued to follow my career and collect my art until the day he died. So he thought it was so amazing, he put it in the Christmas issue, um, Centerfold. He wrote about the pieces and he showed the sculptures and the flatbed trucks and um, he was a great help in my career and a great person.